Um, Nonko says, my, my, my dear brother, um, you know, we've known each other for about 14, 15 years. We met in the mid 2000s, about 2006, Manga five, six, somewhere yes, yes. So um, at the time, you were with Department of Economic Development. Nonko has been an HOD of uh, the Department of Economic Development in Kauteng. Um, he has also successfully run a, an amazing department where, where he turned around, um, where he profiler. It was beyond turning around the department, the Department of Arts and Culture, but he profiled it way bigger on the, on the map. The projects that you're doing, no one, no one ever thought you would, will ever be done. You brought the economics uh, in the Department of um, Arts and Culture, and um, you know, you, you really changed the, the, the structure of the department. Is now in the private sector, um, doing a wonderful job there, especially in the property, IT space, and several other areas. And uh, But more importantly, Nkosi is also a pastor, the man of God. In our conversations, thank you for having me. Yeah, um, let's let, let's get into it. If you are to be given the opportunity, given what is the country and the world is going through in terms of COVID 19, if you are to be given an opportunity to reimagine and redesign the South African economy, what do you think will be the two, three key things that should uh, change? And or introduce for that matter, either introduce or change or bring into the fore so that we see this turnaround um, that the country is really looking forward to. I mean, the statistics are showing that we could be losing between three and five million jobs over the next few months, according to National Treasury, but beyond National Treasury, other um, institutions, you know, I think one of the four audit, big four audit firms. Uh, was saying up to six million jobs could be lost. If that is the case, you know, if you were to be given an opportunity to redesign and reimagine the economy, the South African economy, what would you do, brother? It's, a, it's an interesting question that you ask. Um, if I was given that opportunity, I, I think th th there are three or four things that I can think of. Right. One is let's find a way of restructuring our trade policy. Mm. Uh, let's find new emerging trade partners uh, because COVID, it's a global phenomenon. Right. Uh, I affect it in a pillar. It affects also other countries. Mm. And the countries that happen to be our big trade partners are affected quite deeply by mm. it. In China, the UK, Germany, the United States, right. and, and, and other countries are straight and now traditionally. So uh, even if you know, our economy could get back to what it used to be, we would not have as many people to sell our goods and products to. Right. So it's time to look for other places where we can sell. And right. for me, the, 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 the low hanging fruit is the African continent. Can um, I you begin... Yes, sir. There is, a, there is a noise in Luginyagaza. Abonjo Bunyagaza, Jemanji. Okay, it's a chule. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the Lukube brother. Yes. Now, in, in Africa is, is a good place we could begin to trade more effectively, more meaningfully. Because uh, some of the sectors that they are busy dealing with, we, we are experts in. We've got the expertise, we've right. got the technologies, we've got uh, goods and services, we've got the equipment. Mm -hmm. So I, I really believe that we should be uh, creating more emphasis in inter-African trade. Right. The, the second thing I think we should be looking at is how do we get more South Africans involved in the economy? How do mm -hmm. we create access? Mm. And I think EXS is going to create some Zilan culture by, by, by beginning to break down different sectors and make them more, more accessible. Right. Uh, an example is property. Right. Most of our commercial spaces are owned by a, a few companies. Mm. Now, uh, and if we beg, particularly our malls, 
most performing malls, if we am a report of the commercial property sector, mm. most of my malls are performing very well. Are malls that are based in the townships as well as in the rural areas. That's right. That's so, right. and now the, the the question is, how do we make those spaces more accessible mm. to smaller businesses? Right. And I think one of the things we should be looking at is creating sectional titles in the malls. Mm. Instead of one property company owning the entire mall, mm. uh, I'll make an example in uh, as uh, Waima Ponya Mall. Right. If that could be broken down to sectional titles that mm. as tenants in that mall, uh, small businesses can buy a, their section of the mall. That's right. And open, uh, so that the, 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 the developer in this DIK is reduced mm. and the, the tenant has a bigger uh, sort of um, share in the, right. in, the, in, the, in the mall. Yeah. At the same time, other people who might not even be having other units in the mall can come in and buy mm. we, we off in the property sector. So we would like to have those opportunities not to buy the entire mall because we probably are not there yet. Yes. But to be able to buy a unit or two units and own them and become uh, property, property owners. owners. In them. Yeah. Uh, so I think those are the kind of opportunities that I think we should be looking at. Wow. Another opportunity, uh, Ms. Langata, right, is. You know, th this whole model of the, the collaborative consumption. Mm -hmm. I I'll make an example. E Uber created a very interesting uh, example. Right. Normally, e motors were private, uh, private uh, cars for private use. Yeah. But through the Uber model, my car has suddenly become a business or a potential mm -hmm. business. That's right. If I can. If I want to, I can plug it into the Uber system mm -hmm. and everybody can use my car. Mm. So this space that would have been access space in my car is now available to be used by the rest of the, of the, of the, of the community. Mm. Mm. Uh, and they pay for it. So a car that would sit uh, for seven, eight hours in a day in Zilutu mm. can suddenly become a business opportunity. Right. Uh, Airbnb has done the same mm. uh, with our houses. I can, mm. if I've got a, a spare room in a seven and room, I can put it on Airbnb and it becomes a hotel room. That's right. Now, I might not have the capital to start a big hotel yeah. uh, like a Toho San would have, I but I can make my, my spare room a, a hotel room mm. so that I can generate the money. So, the whole area of collaborative consumption, there are so many opportunities. Mm. Uh, if you are building a house, something like that, mm. the whole community comes in and helps out. Uh, that's where we come from traditionally. Mm. 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 Now, there are opportunities to do those kinds of things in a more sophisticated way. Mm. If I've got certain tools that I use, or uh, for maintenance, yeah. I can actually, uh, with a bit of help, of uh, IT help, yeah. I can actually make those available to everybody else Everyone. that may need to use those tools from mm -hmm. time to time. So collaborative consumption is a big area that I think can be pursued in South Africa. Wow, no, of course, that, that was that was amazing, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> that's a very strong start. Uh, no, I mean, you've said the mouthful. I don't need to repeat it. Um, well done. Now, uh, which, I mean, you've given me the three sectors that you think, I mean, township economy, you've given me the mining, uh, you've given me the, the property sector. Do you think those are the top three that you would push um, uh, after a lockdown or are there any other three other, other sectors that you would want to add to um, to the ones you've mentioned just now, but I think there are sectors which are which are poised for growth mm -hmm. after this lockdown. One of them is I, I, I call it IT. Uh, yes, that sound. Now another area uh, in Zilangata is yeah. the area uh, IT applications. Right, and and I say. Applications, not in the sense of farmer malls, but applying uh, information and communication technologies in other areas of work. That's right. Uh, imagine, because of the COVID, uh, there is an expectation 
um, uh, our hospitals, our health facilities are going to be are going to be overloaded. Mm -hmm. Now there's an opportunity where you and I can use certain technologies to, I mean, touch the temperature, uh, touch the just the basic uh, um, the basic functionalities of the body, send them to a doctor through an app. And the doctor is able to do a basic diagnosis. Mm. Yes, it's not the complete thing because That's I can't right. do any face to face, mm -hmm. but that actually does deal with some of the traffic that otherwise would be going to a mm. hospital or to a clinic. <laughs> uh, e education, electronic right. education, a yeah. big issue because it's not just now Jacobi Colors value. Right. There are, I mean, schools will never be how we've always known them. To mm. Be. Mm. Mm. Um, I mean, he, he, for for the, the last few weeks, in the Zambians for Dela right? And we have adjusted to them with mm. the Dela uh, We've had to invest in a little bit of technology mm. for them to do that, and, right. and that's how I think education is going to be. Mm. So there are massive, massive opportunities mm. there um, to to create those platforms and to create a content that helps children. Not just school children, That's but right. also uh, post metric uh, education as well. Mm. Wow! So applications uh, is, is uh, IT. That's uh, right. A very big space is so cool. Yeah. Another space I'm trying to e logistics. Logistics right. is set to grow. Yeah. Uh, was it two weeks ago? E Shopper Checkers Group introduced yeah. a, an online shopping uh, facility. They, mm -hmm. they call it 66. 660 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Now, for the for it to work and be effective, you can you can shop online, mm -hmm. but somebody has got to pick up those goods and deliver them to you. Mm -hmm. And that is logistics. That is courier services. That's right. Uh, that is transportation of goods and uh, made right. of goods. That that area is going to grow cool. uh, substantially, and I believe that. Uh, with the right kind of support, mm. it can grow and make them opportunities for small businesses. But mm. then, uh, if you go to a malls or semi right, you find a band who are just parking there waiting for mm. somebody or getting it closer. Mm. Or for we have That's right. Those kinds of businesses can be plugged into the, into the logistics system of large retailers. Mm. And all of a sudden, what used to be a van. Uh, is now part of a supply chain system that's of right a large uh, retailer Yo. so those are the some of the sectors in Kabanguti as a cooler as a cooler yeah oh, I don't go see you're giving us a, a mouthful let's go to the church in Fuetu. um <laughs> <laughs> um you know I want to manga which you got the corner of the summer was a cool yes in Nego the cool minters uh, as it beyond the pulpit, uh, so we, you 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 you've touched key, key uh, economic issues in which just ranging from trade to IT for IR, um, economic growth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, you remember, don't go during the struggle in which we now we we lucky that we experience both worlds pre 1994 and post 1994, uh, which the younger generation never got to experience. So. Um, pre-1994, the church played a really big role in, in, in getting the country liberated. In fact, not just you know, in UDF uh, in particular, during the, the UDF days, the church was, was at the forefront. Uh, the South African Council of Churches was, was, was really vocal about uh, these issues, which obviously it's not one kumuntu or a duma. That was not the intention. You know, there may be thousands of people or millions of people in the struggle, but only a couple of people will emerge. You know, Maukul Mangabo, uh, Dr. Frank Chikane, Kul Mangabo, uh, Ubaba, uh, Archbishop Dodo, uh, and a few others. There's quite a few uh, others from Abu Wesele as well, etc., etc. Who were really yes, uh, yes, yes. in the forefront of the struggle. So the church was was seen really on the other side. We obviously had the Africans, uh, uh, you know, the Africaners, the, the particular church, uh, which was, you know, pursuing an agenda of uh, apartheid. Um, so whether it was on the side of the 
of the pro-liberation or apartheid, the church was quite prominent. But post-liberation, post-1994, the, 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 probably the influence of the church, the role of the church uh, in post-liberation, especially on issues pertaining to politics and economy, it wasn't silenced, but the church went silenced. Yeah. What happened? Look, I think um, <laughs> the euphoria, the, the democracy, mm -hmm. uh, made us all uh, assume Uguti, everything is fine. The, the role of the church should just uh, go back to just preaching the gospel mm. and a gospel which is not contextual. Mm -hmm. If you remember during the struggle, there was something called uh, contextual theology or struggle theology. That's right. And there was a lot of academic, uh, theological thinking about what does the gospel mean in a country which is under apartheid? Right. What does it mean in a country where apartheid is actually a product of the church? Mm. So mm. how can we preach the gospel uh, and not be able to engage with the fact that the very same gospel that we are preaching right. is used to oppress us? That's right. Now, with the emergence of a democracy, we thought, well, everything is fine. Mm. Uh, let's just revert back to just preaching the gospel. Mm. And I, I, I think that one of the, 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 the advantages of the kind of crisis that we are in is that it's going to place the, the church under pressure mm. to begin to go beyond just the preaching of the gospel, mm. but to engage with societal issues. Mm. Uh, let me make an example. Um, right. After every crisis, world crisis, mm -hmm. the church has always emerged with a welfare role. Mm. If we beg it, during the, uh, in countries like the UK in particular and other countries, mm. the, the church played a very big role after the world wars right. to, rebuild, um, to rebuild communities and to play a role. I mean, when members of the church are, are hungry and they are struggling financially, the church could not keep quiet and they had to right. play a role of, um, of meeting those welfare needs. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the, the choice that we have as a church in South Africa, which is, what role do we play now? Mm -hmm. Because with the difficulties that are coming, the economy tanking and all of that, mm -hmm. our, our members are going to come to us and say, we are struggling with these things mm -hmm. and we cannot just pray only. Uh, we cannot pray for people and send them away. Yeah. As a church, we've got to make a, I mean, I'm a means of good, how do we sustain those people? And it cannot just be a welfare system only. It also has to be a commercial, a commercial role that the church plays. Right. And I think that the church can become a credible broker of relationships. Mm -hmm. This is what I mean by that. How? Oh, yeah. At a macro level, mm. uh, there's a lot of mistrust. Unfortunately, uh, Israel who doesn't have a lot of cohesion. We, 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 we nation building here to select a bit. So we are looking for I'm a brokers of relationships which are credible. People are not going to look at just their own interests, but they are going to look at the interests of the of their of their communities. Mm. And I think that the church can play that role. Right. Uh, nationally in in, in in structures like in, Netlet and similar structures, right? But also at a local level, yeah, we can become those people that go to the owners of large properties mm -hmm. and say, "We are a church. We have two hundred million. I mean, two hundred people, a uh, HOC, mm. but we would like to buy into this commercial property right. as a church, mm -hmm. so that we are able to generate the income as a church that supports the community that mm -hmm. we are in." Mm -hmm. So Ibad has got to be much more dynamic, we've got to be much more engaging, we've mm. got to be much more uh, forceful when it comes to issues of the economy. Mm. Uh, you made a very interesting example uh, mm. in Zilangata last week, Mukuruma no Minimungos. Yeah. What stops us as churches from buying equity in yeah. companies mm. so that we've got the access to their decision making and right. we are able to say it's not right. Uguti, uh, a gap between income, between the workers and management is so mm. high. Mm. So the church has got to become such an activist. Mm. Um, that's the activist role that I think as a church we should be playing 
both at a localized level, but also at a micro level. Wow. Yeah, don't go see. Um, um, so are you basically saying the church should now start engaging on issues of land reform, uh, issues of, uh, I don't know, I'm asking, do, do you think it's, it's a good idea that uh, as the church we need to engage in any, probably on issues of land redistribution at a national level? Uh, are you saying the, the church should now begin to robustly engage at a municipal level, if you say local, you know, engage the municipalities on, you know, local economic development uh, plans on IDPs, but starting it with key policy issues like land reform, which are very contentious issues. Um, you know, do you think the church can have a, a potentially a, a big role to play between to 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 also bring about manage fear, you know, so that we have a, a great smooth transition of bringing. Uh, new players in respect to, because you keep going to property, I think property without land is not possible. What is your view? Yeah. No, absolutely. I, I, I actually think, um, in fact, there's a, a, a bit of a, of a contradiction there in the sense that uh, one of the biggest owners of property in this country is the mm -hmm. church. Uh, <laughs> in fact, yeah. churches combined probably yeah. own more, uh, greater property than government. Mm. Now, uh, yeah. what are we doing with that property, our own property? Mm. How do we make that available as development wow. spaces? Uh, and also, I think that we should be engaging with the government and communities in land reform and, and similar macro, macro policies. Mm. How do we organize communities in such a way that they're able to benefit from the more programs that government has. Mm. But also, how do we engage local landowners mm. um, and say to them, look, we can organize communities here. You need broad-based, uh, I mean, uh, empowerment, mm. and you need broad-based participation right. in, 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 your, in your business. Let us come together. Let us be a credible broker. Mm. We are not about ourselves, but we are about the, the, the community that mm. we serve. Mm. And, and begin to come up with our project that can help us in that, in, in, yeah. in that session. Wow. So you're basically saying, Don Kosi, um, we can, the church, especially, you know, the, the big, I'm not going to mention mainline, they've got quite a lot of properties. Um, <laughs> oh, so yes. they can use those properties to leverage and engage the local players uh, and engage government and say, we've got 20 hectares, but we want this 20 hectares to be 100 hectares. How do we work together? in making sure that this 100 hectares becomes commercially viable, you know, this 20 hectares becomes bigger so that we can build them a factories, we can build uh, schools, we can build hospitals, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, you know, uh, that, that's, is that basically what you're saying? Absolutely, absolutely. Let me make an example. Yeah. Um, just before the lockdown, right. I, I, Need to go towards a club. Yeah. If you call my club or the town, uh, going towards Ikita Marriage Bay. Right. It's property which is owned by the church there. Mm. And as far as I could see, it's no longer being used. Mm. It's laying there you can uh, but that property could be used for a whole lot of purposes. Mm. It could be used as a clinic, it could mm. be used as a school, it could be used as a community development center. So the, the church's property right. should become a place of development. Mm. Um, and Tina, as smaller churches, which are non mainline independent yeah. churches, we are not also free of that obligation because by then, mm. it's basic to Zilangat. Uh, right. mm. Why don't we use that space as development spaces as well? But that start at a local level, right. our engagement with Omar Spala, our engagement with local businesses mm. and the community. Because I think that we've got to become a voice of the community. Right. Yes, there are politicians and there's politics and we don't want to replace that. But we want to play our role uh, of representing our communities and ensuring that our communities are able to develop uh, with our leverage in, in, in play. And, and that goes all the way up to 
uh, national policies like land reform, black like properties, black like economic empowerment, and even things like the uh, black industries. We, we are losing uh, you, of course. Let us be the ground in which those are cultivated, and let us be the voice in which we can. Right. Let me uh, right. shoot the last, the last question, so that I can uh, release you. Nongosi, uh, I know most churches, uh, HOC included, and several others uh, throughout the country, once or twice a year we hold what you call business seminars. You know? great. Um, you know, we try to, sometimes we, we have a business seminar and try to do some, a bit of mentorship. Um, you know, that's, that's the little that we can do. Uh, we have been doing, sorry, not can do, that you have been doing. Yes, yes, contributing yes, to yes. Society. You know, as you know, churches are contributing in every program the country has. June, we have Inyanga Yonke of Youth Month, Mabu September, Inyanga Yo Mama, Mabu September. Inyanga uh, Yabantu, um, sort of uh, cultural uh, month, basically. Yes, month, yes, etc. Yes. Et et so now the the you know uh, now I'm 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 saying what at a micro at a local microeconomic level, just give us a, a few examples. You know I know you've given us one or two, but a few examples. Where do you think the church can practically get involved uh, in? The affairs um, in in building the local economy that is beyond of the of its church members now. Um, yes. Any that come to mind, uh, Nungos? Look, I, I, there, there are a few examples that I can I can think of. Um, for, for instance, uh, um, I always think in terms of property because yeah. uh, that's yeah. that's that's the Don't area. Worry. Uh, Go for <laughs> but I, I'm thinking a, a life abundant uh, ministry. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 we use that for church services. Right. We use that once or twice a week. Mm. Mm. Why can't we use that space as a place where we can do the training for people mm, mm. for the rest of the week. Right. Um, why can't we use that space as a space where a community, not just the church members, mm. but a community can actually have its own meetings? Mm. Um, why can't we use that space as a space where we, the young people can come together and have more programs that build them, that build their characters, Incubation. not as members of the church, mm. but as a community? Mm. Uh, can, why don't we, in fact, we have already started with this program, trying to get the local councillor mm. and ama, ama officials ama spala, to come and engage with the community. Let's have an engagement with, in this area of the city. Mm. What can we, be, can we do as a community together with ama spala right. to begin to address ama plight of the people here? How do we create productive uh, relationships Mm. With the with government, with um, other players. I mean, we happen to be located right next to a police station, mm. but we haven't had a relationship with the police uh, who are just across the road from us. Yeah, you're right. So we want to build those kinds of relationships mm. for the benefit of the community. Unabantu who come, who are our members, who are in abusive relationships. I'm a police anangala. As a church, we should become. A, a broker of those relationships mm. and try and find I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a solutions. Mm. But the, the, those are social issues. Mm. The same can be done also with I'm a, I mean, commercial commercial issues. We've had a conversation with Umas Pala because Umas Pala wanted to use that space uh, to create a new CBD in the Eden area. And we were saying to Umas Pala, no, that is great, but we would like to have a stake there as a church. Right. So that we are able to create economic opportunity as a church for the for the community. Mm. As well as well. Right. So uh, that is the role that I think Ibanza should mm. begin. Uh, we have members in our churches who can play a very meaningful role in empowering those communities because 
Uh, so the my members are some of them that when they have That's access right. to different information, mm. who have access to different, uh, I mean, expertise. So let's use those things and become an instrument for community. Yo, I, no, because I think I think we don't have enough time. <laughs> I'm I'm realizing we, it's really um, we we should have given you two hours, three hours, four hours, the whole night. Um, the, the the passion uh, on on economic issues uh, let me just have an unrelated i know uh, property is your area yeah i'm just throwing an, a, 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 an interesting question um, in the arts and culture space particularly musicians they're going through difficult times yeah um, absolutely. you know a lot of musicians are, are, are pillar and are shows because the sales or because of piracy are very low, online sales are corner, but they're very low. Uh, the truth is our money in the court. So, Bavarashella Masondo, I'm a musician, Bavarashella, and the shows are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, obviously, some are still making money through online um, sales as well, but very few. The truth is very few. Um, what do you think, um, you know, a musician out there, not just gospel, any musician out there, um, you know, should do post lockdown, not just now, because there's very little to do now, but post lockdown, typically, because I know you've got, you've got quite a lot of experience in terms of arts and culture. If anything comes to mind. Look, there's, um, there's a very interesting project that I always think of. Um, a group um, called, uh, what was it called? DJs United, or yeah, just something like that. Yeah. But what these guys did, they, they, they raised the money mm -hmm. and they bought basic equipment right. for AMA musicians, who are specifically AMA, AMA DJs. Right. And they gave uh, these DJs, which was a laptop and a sound mixer, and I don't know the technicalities of mm -hmm. that industry necessarily. Mm -hmm. But they gave them very basic equipment. Right. And what happened is those, those, those guys, those young guys, started making music in their back rooms. I, I have a friend whose son makes music, good back room, mm -hmm. and, and what happened is they also started collaborating amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. One would come with a beat um, and place it on a particular platform that they are sharing. Another one comes with a different mm. sound. Mm. And they started making music and commercializing that music. With them. Mm. Now, I guess what I'm saying is let's, let's look at ICT. Uh, there's a lot of collaboration. Uh, uh, Uba Butem, the OEC, OE, a case at N Philharmonic That's right. Orchestra. Yeah. yeah. Uh, during the, the stage five lockdown, mm -hmm. he brought musicians from Joburg and from Durban mm -hmm. and had them perform online. Mm -hmm. uh, they were sitting in different places, everybody mm -hmm. sitting in their own houses. Right. But they were able to perform, if I remember correctly, they, upon, uh, they performed Abide with Me. And it was such amazing But these people are not in one space. Mm. They are sitting in different cities, but they are able to come together and perform such an amazing uh, piece. Yeah. Now, those are opportunities that are available for AMA musicians. Mm. Mm. You see, Zilankata, if I can put it this way, then the next few years are going to depend on the extent to which we're able to collaborate mm. and create partnerships. Wow. The same goes with musicians as well. Yeah. So it goes to the church, uh, the message is to the church, to the musicians, to anyone, any performing artist, and more importantly, even also my business as well now, Bobang aside, collaboration, uh -huh. collaboration, collaboration. Don't go see. Um, you've, you've really given us a lot more than what we had expected. I'm sorry, Uti, we, we, we had a bit of glitches, um, you know, uh, in the, at the beginning. But guess what? You've given us a lot more. Any final word that you want to say to us and our viewers? Uh, all, all that I would say 
let's 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 unleash our creative potential. Yeah. Let's create those partnerships and let's build this nation. Yeah. Uh, the future of this nation is not in government. I have nothing wrong with government. Government will play its role. Yeah. But the future of this nation is going to be in its people being able to work together and explore our opportunities that are there. Wow. God bless you, my brother. Thank you, God. Good evening. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you very much. And keep doing the great work. Uh, bless you, brother. Thank you. Literally. Um, my, my, my dear brother, um, you know, we've known each other for about 14, 15 years. We met in.